much. Um, I'd like to thank WAC and the organizers for inviting me to be here. And I'd like to thank um, the Ainu people uh, whose land this is. And, and um, uh, thank you to um, all of the other speakers who've brought such important and, and um, uh, useful ideas today to, to us here today. Uh, I wanted to speak about indigenous archaeology in the future because um, uh, I, I think there is a future <laughs> for indigenous archaeology and um, I, look, I look forward to the ways that we can move ahead with this. Um, I've got a few areas that I wanted to cover. Um, the um, titles I've put up are kind of broad and uh, I'll explain them as I go along. In general, these are just some of the areas that I think we can work on. So looking here, there's a Wikipedia page for indigenous archaeology. And so I think um, people might go to this, look at, um, do a search for indigenous archaeology, find this page, and uh, think that it's um, kind of accepted that people agree with the tenets of indigenous archaeology. Uh, in fact, um, the, whether indigenous archaeology gets taught um, or encouraged pretty much relies on individual uh, professors, individual universities, individual practitioners. So while many of us may perceive this as the right way to do things, as a good way of doing archaeology, it's not um, not widespread. We need to think about how indigenous archaeology um, draws um, in and addresses colonial legacies and seeks to dismantle power structures um, that prevent indigenous people from fully participating in sciences. It's just dis distinct from uh, what's been called community-based archaeology. So we need to, to think about what it is we actually do and how it's being taught. I, I look at um, many different external connections that we can make. Uh, there are um, a lot of disciplines in which indigenous people work and the, the tenets of indigenous archaeology can be applied in these areas. So there are, this is just a, an example, the U.S. Forest Service has a tribal uh, relations program and tribal people participate in forestry activities, but uh, indigenous people could work in biology or geology, um, many different fields, and still uh, draw inspiration from indigenous archaeology. So I think we're looking um, at uh, what I, I see as this, the second generation of indigenous archaeologists. Um, I, uh, I kind of think of myself as one of the, the first group <laughs> that, that came about. Um, and our first group faced a lot of resistance. Uh, to the presence of our opinions in the discipline. Um, the second generation might see things like that Wikipedia page and think, oh, this is good, I can go in, into archaeology and um, people will accept the type of work I do and uh, the way I want to do work. And uh, they'll, they'll face similar issues, they'll face similar resistance. Um, so I, I'd like for us to consider ways to support the, the new generation of scholars. Um, this is, uh, these are two people who have received scholarships from the Society for American Archaeology. This is a, a long-standing uh, scholarship program. I think it's been going since um, probably the 1990-something. Um, and uh, there are scholarships that are awarded every year to indigenous um, uh, scholars. and. Um, so these are just two of the, the ones this year. So we need to support the next generation, um, advocate for scholarships, for training, um, and in particular, putting people in touch with one another. Because that was one of the things that was so important for our first generation, was getting to know one another and getting to know that there were other indigenous people practicing archaeology. One thing I was thinking of is whether there are areas of study that uh, could be considered off limits to us as indigenous people. Um, this is um, a workshop on genomics 
for Native Americans, and I've I've known some at least one uh, person who did attend this workshop, and a, a very bright uh, young Choctaw woman uh, who, who had an interest in in genomics. And I think there's a danger sometimes that because people have their own uh, cultural protocols about what to do and what not to do when it comes to uh, areas like human remains, they may tend, they may find themselves as judging the choices that others make. And we need to understand that there are differences within our cultures and we have different ways of doing things. And um, we need to uh, be careful about how we, we speak to one another about our choices. So I, I find that uh, in the United States, many Native American archaeologists work uh, either in the field of repatriation or in cultural resource management. They may work as tribal historic preservation officers. And uh, some of these fields exist because of federal legislation. So there are laws that um, provide for repatriation and for uh, tribal historic preservation work. Um, I think there are a smaller number of Native Americans who are in academic institutions and a very smaller, much smaller number who are tenured faculty. Uh, so I see the, uh, <laughs> as I made, I made a presentation earlier where I, I kind of pondered about whether it's a good idea for Native people to work in um, repatriation, I, I guess. I think the jury's still out on that, <laughs> but uh, but because we we kind of get drawn into those fields because we have uh, expertise that can be applied uh, there. Um, does does that need sort of limit in our minds what uh, what we should and shouldn't do, where where we should and shouldn't go as far as uh, um, jobs or you know, areas of research? So thinking some more about um, professional uh, positions, um, one of we in the United States we just had our twenty twentieth or twenty first Native American to receive a PhD in archaeology. That's um, Dr. Ora Merrick Martinez, and um, uh, like I said, there may be as many as five Native Americans who are tenured faculty. Um, people work in. You know, they may be a professor at a university, or they may do something like this, be the head of a cultural center. Um, there are many more people who are not indigenous, but who are practitioners of indigenous archaeology. And I, I, you know, many of you are here um, right now in this room. And we, we um, Again, we need to be able to link up with one another, to support one another, and to make sure that we're able to increase our numbers, uh, that we, we support each other and we find that next generation and support them through their work. Uh, this is kind of along that same line, uh, connections with peers. <laughs> uh, this was from uh, WAC7 in Jordan. And um, so, in the United States, the initial meeting of Native American archaeologists was really in 2001 at a conference um, that was held at, at Dartmouth. And that led to a network. It was informal at first. Um, eventually, we got a listserv and um, made ourselves a group. And so that, it, but it, it was uh, very, you know, person to person, we we would meet somebody new and we'd add them onto the group. Um, we need a better way to support each other worldwide, to link up with people in other parts of the world who are going to be having the same struggles, may need the same kind of encouragement. Maybe someone's interested in a type of project um, in um, Australia where you know someone in um, who's you know, Nespers has expertise about how to negotiate uh, research. They, you know, if we could link the two together, something like that would help. I was also thinking about publications. So there have been a lot of publications about indigenous archaeology, but um, many of these have been edited volumes. And I think there are, 
there are very few that are specifically focused on a, um, like a, a single research question um, or that are a single authored uh, volumes. I put Mike Wilcox's um, book right there because that's, um, I think that was actually his dissertation. There are some others, um, other books that are um, hopefully going to come out from the WAC um, Indigenous Archaeology series. Uh, those are still being worked on. So, um, again, this is from, uh, from Jordan. Uh, thinking about WAC, it's for me, it's been the organization that supports me as an indigenous archaeologist. Um, I haven't, uh, except for the personal connections in our small group of indigenous people, um, I haven't had that same level of, of broad support in the United States in organizations. Um, but coming to WAC, you can uh, go to all kinds of sessions and hear all kinds of papers and um, people are explicit about how they work with communities and um, we had a, um, the the presentation uh, the, the Peter Ucko lecture this year was you know, so focused on uh, collaboration and community uh, work so WAC is um, the WAC is the place. <laughs> WAC is where, you know, WAC's ethical stances are in line uh, with the basic beliefs of indigenous archaeology. Respect, collaboration, uh, thinking about the memory of how archaeology evolved. And uh, so I think WAC can do a lot to make sure that we continue to grow and prosper. So here are some of the um, upcoming projects that WAC has going on that relate to indigenous archaeology. We've proposed the creation of a listserv, um, a WAC indigenous listserv for WAC members who identify themselves as indigenous. This would allow people from all over the world to connect with each other through email um, and talk about, just talk about things, um, maybe ask questions, maybe share um, projects, share um, papers, things like that. Uh, we're talking about having the third WAC Indigenous Inner Congress. So there have been two others. Um, the first one was in New Zealand. The second one was in um, Indiana. And we're proposing having a third uh, to be held on Indigenous land. Then there will be a meeting of the WAC Indigenous Council that will be held uh, immediately after this plenary in room 302. Um, please go uh, get a lunch and, and bring it to room 302. The um, composition of um, the WAC Council includes spaces for 12 indigenous members, 12 indigenous people. And um, one of those people will serve as a representative to the WAC executive. And uh, this is uh, a great way for, for people to get involved in WAC, to um, help WAC move, um, move along with, with work. And um, in my time as being an indigenous member in the executive, um, it was a great source of support for me. Uh, it, it helped me um, know that there were other people out there that believed in the type of work that I was doing. And it helped me in when I worked on projects for WAC um, see that I could draw on my own indigenous perspective and work with a, um, a global organization to advance uh, archaeology. So I've put those um, those first three up there, but I, I think uh, with this plenary, what we want to do is to fill in the blanks. Uh, we can we can have as many spaces as we as we need to uh, to come up with uh, what how we see the future of indigenous archaeology. Thank you.